Hello again, my discipleship friends. Thank you for joining me as today we are highlighting 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 5. And for this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that in some way the tempter had tempted you and that our labors might have been in vain. So I call this labor made in vain because uh, we see that there, there is a real concern that temptation can get in the way of us accepting the gospel. Even though we may have heard the gospel or maybe even understand the gospel, if we're not willing to give up our, our sin, all that information that we have in our head is made in vain. And so explaining this in its original context is written to the Gentile believers in Thessalonica where Paul could only stay for a brief period of time. And he didn't have all the time he wanted to really strengthen their doctrine and clarify more about who Jesus is and, and what it would mean for Jesus to return. Uh, but this spe specific verse, how does it fit in with what's before and after it? We see that, that Paul was worried about the faith of the church in Thessalonica. Uh, but the good news is that he sent Timothy there, and Timothy sent back a, a good report that the, the people's faith there was strong. It was ongoing, and he, there was room for improvement on their knowledge. But that faith was a secure faith, made secure through Jesus Christ. So why would the Holy Spirit include this passage in the book? Well, something I find interesting about it is when we think of the Hebrew name Satan, that means accuser. But when Paul's referring to him here in this passage, he's referring to him as the tempter. That, that I, the fact that he loves to continue to put temptations in front of it, that we would be so distracted with our lusts and our, and our desires for sin that even with a pure, simple presentation of the gospel right in front of us, of us, we would be too distracted to really accept the good news of Jesus Christ. And so I find it interesting where the, the context for the letter as a whole is one where um, he is concerned about the, the level of information they have about Jesus Christ in this very moment when he was saying that he couldn't stand it any longer, that he was just so concerned for them. What was the big threat that he was concerned about? The power of temptation. That, again, that even if we have an understanding of the basic message of the gospel, that we'll be too distracted by our sin. And so it's uh, an encouragement to see that in the case with those in Thessalonica, uh, even though they you know, they did lack some of that information. It's, you know, it's, it's not how much we know. It's not how much we do that makes us a saved and rescued people. We see that, that we are a rescued people because God loves us, and he is the one who secures us. So what does this mean today? Well, the, the basic concept of Jesus dying on the cross to pay for the debt of our sins, that concept is usually not too complicated for people to grasp. You know, because we owe a debt, Jesus pays that debt, most people can understand that. So it's, it's not actually the concept of the gospel that becomes the biggest hang-up for people, but it's our sin, it's our temptations. That if, if we are people who, who love our sin more than the Savior, then we're going to keep doing what we're doing. It's like, what, what you... If I'm going to follow Jesus, I have to stop doing these things. I identify by these things. I would be changing who I am. Well, my friends, that is the message of the gospel, is that we don't have to be who we were born as, that we can become newly identified as those who bear the righteousness of Christ, that when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. But if we don't like that idea of, of giving up our identity to take on the identity of Christ, and, and we would choose to hold on to those sins and temptations, then, again, there's that concern that it's, it would all be in vain. And this is why when we're sharing the gospel message with people, we have to tell people the bad news as much as the good news. We have to, to warn people of the consequences of sin, that it leads to an eternal death. And if we're not communicating that and just telling them the good news of, hey, there's an awesome guy named Jesus, and he loves you. you know, that's true. But if we only tell that good news part of it, 
then people aren't going to leave their sins. And if we don't leave our sins, then we're never really actually embracing the Savior, are we? So how does this passage give me hope? Well, my hope is that my ability to understand, like, my hope is it's not based on my ability to understand everything about God. And there are going to be lots of things I still don't grasp. I mean, when, when he is the God who created the heavens and the universe, like right now in my finite form, there is no possible way I can grasp all of God. And that's okay. That's not why I'm a saved and rescued person. I belong to God because of repentance and belief. That acknowledging that I, I don't, I don't want I don't want to be held on by my sins any longer, but that I want to be held on to by Christ. It's that desire to turn away from it. That's, that is, is what gives us that, that assurance of, of salvation because it's not what we do, it's not what we know, but it's about Jesus Christ and who he is and what he has done for us. Jesus Christ alone is our salvation. So, trying to, to respond, put this, these truths into action. I think of a lot of people that I have met over the years who stopped going to church because they just felt like they were too sinful for church. And they looked at it like, oh, you know, I, I just, I, I just, I, I can't get over my sin. My sins are always just going to be there. You know, I'm, I'm never going to be as good as people in this church. And so they stopped going because they believe they, they believe too much of the power of, of their own sin. But that goes against the direct message of the gospel. There is no sin so great that Jesus Christ cannot overcome it. Because if Jesus' blood isn't valuable enough to overcome our sins, then, that doesn't mean, then, well, then what that means is that we don't have a perfect Savior. But we tend to get caught up on this. And I was actually just listening to earlier today a, a podcast where someone was... was was talking about um, just the, the large numbers of, of people in churches and in evangelical churches. So that'd be like churches like ours where people will go every Sunday. Um, but, you know, not all of us actually believe that we're saved. Uh, I know of, of one big church that, you know, they, they put on big conferences so more people can be like them. But then about yeah, at this point, you know, maybe 15 years ago, they did a big study to see you know, why is their church so effective so more people could be like them? And then they realize that, um, you know, it was a third of their, their members uh, didn't even consider themselves as belonging to, to Jesus Christ. Why? Because they didn't think that they had ever really gotten over their sins. And so don't be someone who is trapped in your sins and temptations. They do not have to take hold of you forever. And so you know, putting this into action, and this is one of these weeks or one of these days where you, you don't have to put this one in the comment section. You know, if God puts it on you to share your sins with the world, that's on you. Um, but I recommend you keep this this one between you and God. But name these sins that uh, that you're tempted to think are too big for Jesus to handle. You know, what are these things that you you're just wrestling with, and you like, and you just think it's like, well, I know. I know, I, I understand Jesus, and I want to love Jesus, but I just keep struggling with this sin over, over here. If you think that sin is too great for Jesus to overcome it, name it, give it to Jesus Christ, and trust that his grace is greater than all of our sins. Our Savior is perfect. Our Savior is powerful and loving do not let your temptations be the thing that stops you from accepting the good news of Jesus Christ. My friends, be comforted because Jesus is great. Let's pray. Father, we know that even as those who belong to you, we, we struggle with temptations. Temptations exist in our lives, and that'll be the case until Jesus comes back to give us new bodies to go with our new souls. Uh, but until that day comes, don't let us give too much power to those temptations. Do not let it deceive us into thinking that it is our sin that rules over us. Lord, you are a God. You are a king. And when you claim us, there's nothing that will stop us 
from joining you in your kingdom forever. Father, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. My friends, I hope that is a comfort for you, and I encourage you to, to like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so you see when these videos come up, and keep studying God's Word. Have a great day.